Joining us for a conversation is Giant Bandari. Mr. Bandari is the founder of Capitalism and Morality, and he is also a highly sought out advisor to institutional investors. Mr. Bandari, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me on, uh, Maurice. <laughs> well, it's great to have you back on the show to discuss the current state of the natural resource space and some potential buying opportunities for our audience members. Giant, let's begin with physical precious metals. Based on the geopolitical and fiscal challenges throughout the world, should gold and silver be higher? Uh, absolutely, Maurice. Uh, the world is increasingly becoming uh, very chaotic. Uh, the globalization system is falling apart and there is nothing to repair it right now. The, the problems with China continue to escalate. The Taiwan issue is always there. The Ukraine and Russian problem continue to get worse and the third world countries are uh, falling apart uh, and uh, that is uh, that means that the globalized system is at a huge stress and the US dollar is under increasing pressure because America uh, decided to use the US dollar as um, uh, uh, as a tool uh, to punish other people other countries so uh, it is starting to uh, US dollar is a problem now. So the, the, the given all this situation, we really have a chaotic economic situation and a chaotic social situation as well. And gold and silver become extremely important in chaotic situations because what you own in your hand is um, no one's liability. It's your property, it's in your hand. I like how you're being responsible with your words here. You didn't reference manipulation or some conspiracy theory. You just stated some obvious facts here. But let me ask you this in reference to that. Which precious metals have your attention at the moment and why? Is it just gold and silver? Um, yeah, yes. Uh, I mostly prefer gold and silver and actually primarily gold, uh, Maurice. Uh, because the fundamentals, the relationship of gold price with the chaos of the world is uh, more uh, is is di more direct than of any other uh, precious metal. So if you have palladium, uh, platinum, or rhodium, they have in a lot of industrial usages. So there are many factors behind pricing of those commodities. Now, leaving the precious metals, what are the base metals indicating to you? Um, well, uh, you see, the, the market is increasingly worried about uh, the, the economic situation in China. Uh, I am not worried about Chinese economic growth. I think China has a lot of more growth left in it. Um, and now, Maurice, I haven't been back to China for the last two or three years, but um, you know, I continue to meet a lot of Chinese. I continue to, and I hope, hopefully, I will be in China next month. I think uh, China has a lot of growth left, so there will be short-term hiccups because we have all these globalization and chaos situation right now. Uh, but I continue to be very optimistic about China. I think China will continue to consume uh, commodities going forward. Ch China already consumes about 50% of virtually every commodity we can think of from cotton to iron ore to coal to base metals. China consumes 50% or more of everything. Oh, they have a huge appetite for resources. <laughs> All right, moving on to resource stocks. I speak with speculators daily and the sentiment in general is a mixture of confusion, frustration and nervousness. As an advisor to institutions, can you provide us with some insights that you're discussing with your clients? So, so Maurice, this is going to be a lengthy response uh, and, uh, the, the, uh, you know, people should be confused but not frustrated because the what is happening is something that should have been expected. Let's talk about the mining stocks. Firstly, people often conflate commodity mining with the underpinning commodity. You should never ever do that. And the reason is, uh, Maurice, that Let's say when gold price goes up, of very often what happens is that the cost of mining and processing gold goes up as well. 
and often it goes up faster than the increase in price of gold, which means that the profit actually gets squeezed rather than enlarged when gold price goes up. And this is what you often see. This is what I have seen over my years in, in the mining industry. And the end result is that, uh, let's say GDX has uh, underperformed gold uh, uh, despite whatever time frame that you look at. If you look at 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 year time frame, uh, gold tends to outperform or at least is very closely correlated with the mining stocks. Mining stocks do not offer you the leverage that is often talked about. So those people who invest in the mining stocks for leverage are on an, are on an erroneous path. Now, uh, while these commodities are, uh, you know, they, there's a still a correlation between gold and mining stocks. And uh, as I said, there's, n there's no leverage in mining stocks. The next thing is the junior mining companies and junior mining companies are a completely different game altogether. Uh, they don't necessarily respond to changes in uh, uh, metal prices. Uh, they respond to what actually the company is finding in the ground uh, over a medium term. Now, Maurice, uh, when I started working in the mining industry, uh, the venture stock exchange was about uh, 3,200 or something. That was 17 years back. Today, it is about 600. Uh, so basically, in real terms, you have lost anything but uh, uh, something like 80% of your investment in the last 17 years. Now, if I am expecting about 20% growth in my investments every year, I would have expected uh, my 3000 index to have gone up to uh, about uh, uh, 50 times, uh, which is that I would have expected the index to be about 150,000 when it is actually only 600 today. So that is what the destruction of the value in the venture stock exchange has been, which means, Maurice, that uh, an average guy is going to lose virtually everything he invests in the junior mining uh, sector. Junior mining sector is extremely risky. You have to be extraordinarily picky about where you invest your money. You will lose money if you don't, if you're not very, very, very careful about where you invest your money. You should never invest in the junior mining in industry for the commodity that is that drives you passionate. You should invest in a junior mining industry because of what you think they have uh, in terms of the ground that they own and the quality of the management they own. And you have to have a valuation which tells you that the valuation of what you see right now in front of you is higher than the price you the the, the price you are paying to invest in that company. Unless you do this properly the chances are that you will lose virtually everything. As, as I said, um, what was 3000 ju junior is index in 2016, 2017, sorry, 2006, 2005 is actually now only 600. So you have lost about 80% or more in real terms of what you invested in 17 years back. So you have to be very, very picky and very careful in, in terms of what you invest in. And speaking of that, would you mind sharing with us, are you more interested or do you see a better opportunity in the grassroots or development stage or the mining? Uh, well, I am uh, invested uh, across the board in, in all the three kinds of uh, subsectors, uh, but I have traditionally found uh, mining companies to be uh, very expensive. That said, I am invested in one gold mining stocks and Maurice, I am invested in a lot of coal mining stocks. Uh, uh, these are all multi-billion dollar market cap coal companies and they are trading at a huge discount to their inherent value. So uh, I, among the mining stocks, the only companies that I'm invested in are primarily coal companies. Um, uh, uh, I can give you names if you want to at some point of time. And the reason, let me just very briefly tell you why I'm so keen on coal companies. 
What is happening, Maurice, is that uh, institutional investors are no longer investing in coal companies. They, they, they are very afraid of their ESG profile mm. if they invest, uh, have coal companies in their portfolios. Now, of course, they are not shy about using electricity made from coal, but that is that is a hypocrisy we can talk about <laughs> at another time. Uh, uh, and you know what you see with Glencore or uh, uh, tech is that they want to spin off the coal uh, portfolio into into an other entities, as if spinning off would reduce carbon emissions. So this is the kind of hypocritic, hypocritical world, woke world that we live in. But it is what it is. The problem is that the big people with big money have sold off their gold, uh, coal company stocks, which means that coal companies have now traded, have traded down to an extremely cheap valuation. Now, at the same time, Maurice, we are using more coal today very strangely than we have ever used in the past. In 2022, we more used more coal in the world than we ever used in the past. And in 2023, we are very, very likely to use more coal than we used in 2022. So the, the world does something else and claims to do something else. Uh, but having said that, uh, coal companies are uh, trading for price to earning ratio of two or less than two which means that these companies are generating if they are trade you know let's say their share price is 5 they might be making a profit of more than 2 or 3 dollars every single year and they might be sitting on cash worth about 1 or 2 dollars every share so that's the kind of profile these companies have now these billion dollar coal companies are sitting on huge amount of cash and the reason is that these companies know very well that when the time comes, neither the fund managers nor the banks are going to give them any cash to put their mines into production. So they are well cashed up and they keep their cash in the in the treasury. So, uh, so this is what I can see about the mining industry. I'm only mostly primarily in, invested in coal companies at the moment. Uh, as far as the development stages companies are concerned, uh, a lot of risks would have been re re uh, uh, reduced by the time a project comes to a development stage. Uh, but Maurice, uh, again, remember that uh, one person in a conference recently told me that it takes about an average of 23 years, two, three years to find a project and put that into production, which means that uh, when I find a project, uh, and if I'm expecting a 20% return on what I invest, what I invest now should be worth about, um, every dollar should be worth about $55 by the time it goes into production. And assuming that uh, I don't lose any money elsewhere, uh, but because I do, I actually should expect 100 or 200 times my, my investment in any junior mining companies. So uh, again, junior mining companies are a very risky game. With the development companies, a lot of risks will have been reduced. And then uh, I try to understand who might be acquiring those, those projects, what the product, when this project might go into production, uh, and what the quality of the management is, and how much I can trust those people. If I uh, understand that well enough, I do invest in development stage companies. You can get good deals in development stage companies, and also because your downside is relatively well protected in development stage companies. Uh, now, coming to the junior mining stocks, uh, as I said, uh, uh, they are an extremely risky business and uh, you should be uh, careful in what you invest in because you are going to lose most of your money unless you are very picky. Uh, and the prime interest that I have when investing in a junior mining company is that I must uh, understand the quality of management very well. And I must understand that these are the people who are reliable, who are ethical, who are business savvy, and who understand valuations and who make sure that every dollar they put into the ground creates a value of more than a dollar in the market capitalization of the company. So that's, that's how I go about these companies. And I'm uh, uh, invested in base metals and gold 
among the development stage companies and junior uh, uh, the the venture stock uh, is small companies going back to coal uh, number one that is a brilliant contrarian play if i may say uh and you asked the question could you or did we want to know some names i'm sure everyone is uh, has a pen and paper out right now if there are some companies that pique your interest and you're willing to share them please do sir okay so uh, firstly two uh, us listed stocks um, one is uh, p body energy the ticker is btu it's trading at about 20 dollars uh, another company is warrior met, met and it's trading at about 35 American dollars. So these are two American companies. Uh, coal is uh, a big uh, product in Australia. So I can mention about uh, at least four Aussie companies uh, if you're interested. Absolutely. One is, uh, uh, one is Coronado Global, ticker is CRN. Uh, it is trading at uh, Australian dollar 1.39. Uh, Yan Coal Australia, ticker is YAL. Uh, it's trading at Australian dollar 4.60. Uh, then there is White Haven, uh, and the ticker is WHC. Uh, it's trading at Australian dollar 6.40. And then there is a last name that I have in front of me is New Hope Corporation, NHC, uh, and it's trading at Australian dollar 5.40. Uh, all of these companies are very cash rich. They're trading at uh, P by E of uh, 1.5 or 2, uh, and they are, uh, I think they offer good value if you buy them as a portfolio. Would you also be willing to share some of those other companies that pique your interest on the development side and the exploration side as well? Okay, so let's talk about uh, one uh, development side uh, company that uh, I like quite a bit. Uh, it's a company uh, uh, with projects in West Africa. The company is Montage Gold. The ticker is MAU. Uh, the share price is 63 cents Canadian. It tra trades in, in, in the Canadian Stock Exchange. Uh, 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 they have recently, they recently raised money at 70 cents. They are well cashed up. Uh, they have a large project, uh, and uh, remember, Maurice, uh, it's probably a lot easier to put a pro project into production in Africa today than it is in many other countries. Uh, these are, uh, Montage Gold is backed by a solid group of management. Uh, so I think the downside risk in Montage Gold is very low, and the upside is very nice. Now, uh, one thing that I have learned over the last 17 years, among the many other things is, that uh, make sure your downside is protected. I don't want to lose my capital as much as I can protect it. So I think Montage Gold gives me a good downside support with a nice upside. Um, if you want to know about two small venture exchange companies, uh, I'll mention two to you. One is um, Gold 79 Mines, the ticker is AUU, um, and it's trading at two and a half cents, three cents. Uh, I have, uh, uh, I am well invested in this company. Uh, they have uh, at least one fabulous project and uh, two projects that they have option to other parties. I like the management and I think the valuation is extremely good at the current price of two and a half, three cents. And the last uh, a a small company that I want to talk about is Aztec Minerals. Uh, they have two uh, very good projects. Uh, the grades that they have hit at their project in Arizona have been extremely good. Uh, they are trading at 29 cents Canadian. The ticker is AZT. Uh, they also have a project in, in um, Mexico, uh, and that project also is uh, has given them very good grades. I think both the project, the one in Arizona and the one in uh, Mexico of Aztec Minerals, each is worth enough to justify the current market capitalization. Uh, the reason why I'm probably one of the bigger shareholders of Aztec Minerals. Well, Mr. Bandari, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And if I may also share that Gold 79 Mines is a sponsor and we are shareholders and we also conducted in a thorough interview with Derek McPherson uh, earlier this month that uh, highlighted the value proposition of Gold 79 Mines. And I, wouldn't, I wanted to go back just for a moment. Are you of the opinion that we are in a bear cycle 
in a secular bull market, or am I wrong on that? Oh God, uh, Maurice, I have no way to uh, uh, to to comment on that. I think. Uh, we, we can play with these words. Um, the world is what it is, and it's very hard to uh, see into the future of what is coming. Uh, my way to invest is that I invest for value. If I see value, I invest in it. If I find, if I find something that in my view is worth $3 a share, and if I can get it for $1, I buy it. Now, if it's a bear market and my value, my value, what I see as value becomes two dollars eventually, I will still be left with a hundred percent upside. So that's how I inv go about investing in the market. Uh, but I, uh, you know, as as you know, so when when I go about stock picking, I don't wait for the peak or the bottom or for any signals on when the bear market might end or when the bull market might start. Because all these things are things you can claim in retrospect. You can't foresee them. Um, so I don't go about that uh, when it's stock picking. Um, I just see value. And if I see 100 percent, 200 or 500 percent upside, I just go for it and sit on it, uh, sit it out. And usually I overall as a portfolio do well with that. But as I said, globally, the world is in a chaos. Uh, and, and this is always a problem because we can try to connect our stock performance with how the world will move. Uh, but there are so many other factors with how the world will move and how it will affect our share prices. Uh, and, you know, the problem is that, I, you know, one person might say, hey, I'm very afraid about investing in the stock market, so I will in cash all my money. But what if the world moves in a way that your cash gets destroyed because your cash is fiat currency anyway? So, you know, uh, trying to do a one factor analysis of what the world is go what the sh share price will be six months from now has never worked for me and i have never met a person who could predict into the future what was going to happen um six months later oh wonderful wonderful words of wisdom <clears throat> here now giant you've been most generous to us already with the uh stock picks there that you've shared with us when it comes to arbitrage opportunities your name is second to none do you have any to share with us well, um, so there's one company that I mentioned to you last time when we talked. Uh, that company is on its way to close uh, the merger with another company. And that company is uh, Anacotis Mines. The ticker is XYZ in the Venture Exchange, and it's trading at about 37 cents Canadian. Uh, uh, I think the last time I saw it, there is a, an about 15% uh, arbitrage upside. Now, Maurice, this is very interesting, and this is something I uh, face often with people. Uh, people are not interested in a 10 or 15% arbitrage upside. For me, it's an extraordinarily sexy upside. The reason, Maurice, is simple math. If I can actualize a 10 or 15% arbitrage upside in a 15 day or a one month period, then if I compound that money over a year, I can make more than 100% in a year. So, uh, uh, you know, I am more interested in protecting my downside. And if I can then be sure of 10 or 15% upside, I'm more than happy to invest because again, protecting my capital is more important than aiming for a 10 bagger. Well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and I think you're absolutely correct on those words of wisdom again. Now, before we close, Giant, all of the aforementioned are connected in one way or another to a subject that is your life's passion, which is philosophy. For someone new to your work, how does philosophy apply to our discussion today? Uh, well, uh, Maurice, uh, firstly, I'm not a money man minded guy. I enjoy making money. I enjoy making value investments. And I, uh, I think uh, accruing um, capital is in a way very similar to accruing uh, uh, intellectual capital. So you, everyone must try to accumulate intellectual, and spiritual, uh, and uh, financial capital. Uh, that's how you build civilization. That's how you grow. That's how you you construct things and leave 
better things for the future generation. Uh, philosophy is uh, is uh, uh, underpins everything. I uh, I want to uh, uh, I want to understand what makes a society a civilization. What the Western values are because Western values made the West the only civilization on the planet. Values which eventually got copied in East Asia. So I I like to pay all these atten- attention to all these things, uh, Maurice. I read a lot about these things. I read a lot about uh, the religions of the religion of the West, which is Christianity and the, the the Roman culture. What happened in the Middle Ages? I I like to listen to uh, philosophy lectures, and I run a philosophy seminar every year in Vancouver. The next one will be on the 9th of September, 2023, in downtown Vancouver. I bring in people who speak their mind uh, without being afraid of the consequences on their career. There's uh, Dr. Amy Wax, who is going to be speaking on uh, the culture war that is happening, the wokeness that is uh, increasing uh, in the society, uh, which is nothing but uh, feral behavior that is uh, uh, being inflicted on North American society. We have uh, Rick Rule, uh, who is usually a speaker, Adrian Day, Jeff Deist, who until recently was uh, the head of the Mises Institute and who was also uh, the right hand man of Ron Paul. So these are the kind of speakers I have at the seminar. Now, Jane, if somebody wants to see previous year's presentations and also registration, where should they go? Um, So they can go to my website, giantandari.com. There's a tab called Capitalism and Morality. All the videos of the past years are um, are uh, uh, listed there. They are available for free of cost. Um, and uh, you will find a lot of enlightening stuff there. A lot of lives have been changed by those videos because these are the videos in which people have spoken about their subjects without being afraid by the cancel culture crowd. And this is why I take a lot of pride in what, what I do in this seminar. Uh, I uh, the price of the ticket currently is 160 Canadian dollars, which comes to about 125 or 130 American dollars, and they can um, get a 10 percent discount if they if they use a coupon code of P P and P, uh, proven and probable. So P and P, and they can get a 10 percent discount rate. And if anything goes wrong, they can send me an email, and I will send them a coupon code again. Before we close, Mr. Bandari, what did I forget to ask? Well, Maurice, I'm I'm hoping you can visit my seminar again. I know that uh, you like to combine it with Rick Rule's conference. Usually, uh, Rick Rule uh, is not doing his conference this year in Vancouver, but my hope is that in 2024 he will be back in Vancouver. So, if not this year, I want to see you uh, next year at my seminar. Um, I, I think we have uh, talked a lot, uh, Maurice, and I, you know, something that uh, the, the the one thing that I always uh, I'm very interested in is the third world future. And uh, I, I see a lot of third world countries failing, um, Latin America going increasingly woke, rapidly very leftist. I see India falling apart completely. Uh, they have just started demonetization of uh, another uh, currency bill. Uh, and uh, which has led to a dual rate currency system similar to what exists in Argentina. I think India will face huge problems over the next few months. So uh, I think everyone should be paying attention to it, particularly when a lot of people uh, in the financial industry think that India is now the next China. India is not the next China. It is never going to be the next China. I just hope India is not the next Rwanda. Well, you said a lot here. So number one, you put a lot of pressure on me. I definitely want to attend. I'll work on it. You have my word on that, sir. Second, (laughs) uh, for all the aforementioned that you just referenced, let's get you back on the show to discuss them because I know everyone wants to get your insight. Mr. Bhandari, it's been an absolute delight speaking with you. Wishing you the absolute best, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Maurice. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, 
completeness or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.